Welcome to Electron Line. Knowing that the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis for a circle that has its center mass right on the x-axis is equal to 1 quarter pi r to the fourth power. And the moment of inertia of the circle rotating about its center of mass, that's placed at the origin or the center of the circle, is equal to 1 half pi r to the fourth. It's exactly double that because this is simply the, the sum of the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis and the moment of inertia relative to the y-axis, of course, when the y-axis is placed right there. Now, we're going to try to find the moment of inertia of the circle that's now been placed to the side by distance d equals r. It's been moved up a distance d equals r. And then it's been moved up a distance well, let me see here. That's not going to be r. That's going to be a distance equal to twice the radius. All right. So what is the moment of inertia in each case? First, we're going to do it relative to the x-axis, and then we're going to do it relative to the center of the circle. So we're going to use the parallel axis theorem. That means that in this case, we have the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis is equal to the moment of inertia relative to the center mass, which is one quarter pi r to the fourth power plus the area of the circle which is pi r squared multiplied times the distance moved squared r to the fourth oh not to the fourth i'm getting ahead of myself again r squared all right now let's combine that and see what we get so this is equal to one quarter pi r to the fourth plus a whole pi r to the fourth, so quarter plus a whole, that gives us 5 over 4 pi r to the fourth. Now what would it be when we want to do it relative to the center of the circle? So, the, so in this case, of course, we have the circle rotating about the x-axis. In this case, we have the circle rotating about this point here on the x-axis. So now we have the circle rotating like this instead of rotating like this. What does it look like now? Well. The moment of inertia relative about this point right there is going to be equal to the moment of inertia relative to the center mass, that is 1 half pi r to the fourth, plus the area of the circle, which is pi r squared, multiplied times the distance squared we move to the distance r. And so we have 1 half pi r to the fourth plus a whole pi r to the fourth, which is equal to 3 halves pi r to the fourth. So when we see we can use the parallel axis theorem to move it relative to the x-axis or we can use the parallel axis theorem to, to find the moment of inertia relative to the circle rotating about this point like that. And finally we're going to do it when we have the circle now move the distance of 2r. So the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis, this is the circle rotating about the x-axis, is equal to 1 quarter pi r to the fourth, which is the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis in this situation, plus the area of the circle, pi r squared, times the distance traveled, 2r quantity squared. So now we have 1 quarter pi r to the fourth, plus, in this case, we're going to get 4 pi r to the fourth, this is 16 sixteenths, or let's say, yeah, 16 fourths plus 1 fourth, which is 17 fourths pi r to the fourth. And again, now we're going to do it with the circle rotating about this point right here on the axis. So here we have the moment of inertia where the circle is rotating. Here we have it where it's rotating about that point, and here we have it where it's rotating about that point. And that means that the moment of inertia relative to the origin, again, in each case, assuming that the y-axis is right there, is going to be equal to 1 half, because we start with 1 half, pi r to the fourth, plus the area of the circle, pi r squared, multiplied times the distance moved squared, which is 2r quantity squared. And so we end up with 1 half, pi r to the fourth plus, that would be 4 pi r to the fourth, and that would be 8 halves plus 1 half, which is equal to 9 halves pi 
r to the fourth. So you can see that in each case, it's relatively easy to find the new moment of inertia, either relative to the x-axis or relative to the circle rotating about that origin. Again, in each case, assuming that the y-axis is right there with the axis going to the center of the circle. And that's how it's done.